This month in Paris, the world's leaders are meeting to agree a deal on climate change, a meeting known as COP21. Much will be said by a wide range of commentators about COP21 before, during and after the negotiations. As an economist, I would like to focus on some of the financial aspects of climate change. I've been as busy as I can highlighting the effects of climate change for my constituency in the southwest. But climate change disproportionately affects the poorest people in the developing world. They are the most vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change, although they've contributed the least to creating the problem. It's really important, therefore, that COP21 addresses this historic imbalance in terms of greenhouse gas emissions and provides finance and technology for poorer nations. Between 1750 and 2005, just six nations, of which the UK is one, have together been responsible for 63% of total emissions. It was these emissions that brought us to this position where we are now with our comfortable lifestyles. No wonder the poorer countries resent the fact that we are now asking them to cut their emissions. To balance this injustice, the Paris Agreement needs to include free technology transfer for the least developed and most vulnerable nations. These countries need to be able to make a transition to sustainable, renewable and low carbon forms of energy and build the capacity to adapt to a changing climate. The richer nations, who are responsible for creating the bulk of emissions, must pay the bill. We also need to urgently address the issue of the so-called carbon bubble. The essential task of reducing carbon emissions could seriously affect the stability of financial markets. We know that three quarters of known fossil fuel reserves must be left in the ground if we are to stay below two degrees of warming. As we move beyond the era of fossil fuels, there are serious implications for the value of fossil assets and the companies whose balance sheets depend on them. Carbon assets in Europe are worth up to one trillion pounds. A number of financial institutions, including some sizable pension funds in the UK, hold significant fossil fuel investments. We need a clear plan and an agreement on the transition away from fossil fuels to ensure that the carbon bubble is deflated in an orderly way rather than left to burst, which could create havoc to the global financial system. Making the widespread changes to our economic and social systems that climate change demands will be costly, but we must ensure that how the money is spent helps to tackle the inequality that is defacing and destabilizing our world. Without global justice, there will not be a solution to climate change. So we must ensure that the solution to climate change does not result in creating structural injustice for the future as we see it across the world at present.